my name is Julie Gray. I'm from Black Swamp CrossFit. I am a two-year volunteer at the CrossFit Regionals and the CrossFit Games, with this year um, having the honor to be a judge at Regionals and at the Games. My name is Jake Groley. Uh, I'm a coach at Toledo CrossFit, and we will be going over the movement standards for the CrossFit Toledo Community Competition taking place on November 2nd. Um, it's going to start with some thrusters. So Jake's gonna show us um, what a thruster looks like. Uh, Jake's gonna go down into a full squat, meaning that the hip crease is below the knees. And at the top, the bar is gonna be completely overhead with his arms, legs, and knees fully extended. If you looked at Jake from the side, you're gonna see the bar fall over about the middle of his body. Anything in front of that is gonna be counted as a no rep. Jake's gonna show you another thruster from a different angle. The next movement we're gonna go through is the chest to bar pull up. On the chest to bar, we just need to see that your chest is touching the bar at any point under the collarbone bone and that um, at the beginning of every rep, your arms are fully extended. There's a butterfly version that he's doing, and that's acceptable also. If you're unable to do a chest to bar pull-up, the modified version of this is just the standard kipping pull-up where we need to see your chin go over the bar, whether it's in a standard kipping style or butterfly style, and we still need to see that full extension of the arms at the, at the beginning of every rep. All right, my name's Jake, I'm here with Julie. We're gonna demonstrate a bar-facing burpee. Bar facing burpee starts out with athlete facing the bar. They're gonna drop down, get their chest to the floor, come all the way back up, and then jump over the bar on two feet and land on two feet simultaneously. There's no skipping or stepping. If you're too far away from the bar and you need to step closer to jump over it, that is acceptable. As long as you are jumping off of two feet and landing on two feet. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna demonstrate a clean and jerk. First, Julie's gonna have the bar at her feet. She's gonna clean it to her shoulders. Now she's gonna do a jerk. Now that is a split jerk, which is acceptable. The other form of a jerk, also known as a push jerk, Julie's gonna show us. That's a push jerk. Notice how her head is through, her, sho her ears are thro showing through her arms. And that is a good, one, a good rep. And now, front view of a clean and jerk. She'll clean it, the bar will touch her shoulders, and she'll perform movement to overhead. Bar must touch the shoulders. All right, now Julie's gonna perform a deadlift for us. At the top, notice her shoulders are behind the bar and her hips are open. And for each repetition to count, she must touch the ground with the bar. Now the deadlift from the front view. Shoulders still go behind the bar, her hips are open at the top, and the bar touches the floor every time. The next movement we're gonna go through is the handstand push-up. Jake's going to finish the move off with full extension of the arms, make sure his both hands are on the plate, and that his head is visibly touching the ab mat under him. Each move's gonna be um, ending with that full extension with the feet on the wall. If the feet come off the wall while you're fully extended, that's a no rep. All right, now Julie's gonna demonstrate a hand release push-up. Hand release push-up starts by picking your hands up off the floor keeping your body in a full plank position so that you're not bending or worming up. Your feet must remain on the floor. 
the entire time they come up. Anytime after you lift your hands off the floor, it's a no rep. Must hit full extension to the top of every rep with your arms too. All right, now Julie's gonna demonstrate a power clean for us. The bar is gonna start off at her feet on the ground. She's gonna pick the bar up to her shoulders, get her elbow through, elbows through, hips fully extended at the top, stand all the way up. And then that is one rep. The bar must touch the floor every time. Okay, now we're gonna go over the standards of movement for the shoulder to overhead move. Jake's pretty much gonna get the bar any way he wants from ground to his shoulders. Um, if he wants to power clean it, like he just did, as long as that bar gets touching his shoulders and his elbows are in front of the bar. He's gonna push press it up, push jerk it up, or he can split jerk it up. At the end of the move, he must be fully extended and the bar must be over the middle of the athlete's body. We're gonna show you the standards that we're looking for on the toes to bar. Jake's gonna start the rep with his arms fully extended. Each rep, we must see his heels come behind the vertical plane of that bar. If at any point one of those two things don't happen, he gets a no rep. Jake's starting with those arms fully extended. Both feet must touch that bar in between the hands and at the same time. We're gonna go over the standards and movements for the full squat snatch. The bar is gonna start from the floor. Jake's gonna snatch up the bar. We're gonna see his hips go below the knees, full in the school, full squat fashion. And at the top, we're gonna see full lockout of his arms with his hips and his knees fully extended. He must get that full squat depth. And at that top, that full lockout. Again, Jake's gonna get that full squat and then full extension at the top. Want to see that bar over the middle of his body and him showing control of the bar at the top. Jake's going to show us the muscle up. At the bottom, we need to see Jake's arms fully extended. At the top, we need to see the full lock out of the arms. You can use any grip that you want for this move, as long as we see full extension at the bottom and a full lock out at the top. At no point can we see the heels go above the bottom of the rings, or that's going to be a no rep. 